everybody and welcome to the video. Today I'm going to be talking to you about my massive challenge for 2022. As you know, I completed the North Downs Way 50 this year and I secured myself this incredible medal. If you haven't had a chance to watch that video, I'd really appreciate your eyes and ears on it because it took me a long time to put together and it's a video I'm incredibly proud of. Uh, it's a race that I absolutely loved and it's why I'm returning next year. Now from the title, you would have seen already that the aim for this race in 2022 is to achieve 10 hours or less. So nine hours, 59 minutes, 59 seconds is what I'm after. The distance itself is absolutely colossal and of course even completing it is something to be proud of but for me having already achieved that goal uh, I'm looking for something much much tougher and um, it is a lofty goal it's something that is certainly at the moment beyond reach um, but I've got a training block and I've got some ideas of what I'd like to do to get me to that stage. I will be drip feeding information throughout the training period and if you're not already subscribed I'd love you to do so uh, to follow me on my journey. I'll be talking to you in a moment about a couple of things, a couple of key points that are going to hopefully allow me to achieve that goal um, and then like I say I'll start to add more kind of uh, meat to the bone if you like as the training Brock progresses and as I start to build in more specific workouts hopefully you'll start to see a transformation you'll start to see what I'm putting in place to allow me to achieve what is a, yeah, a lofty goal and a big stretch for somebody of my current level of fitness but I've got dreams I think it's always important to set yourself uh, a goal which is when you set it beyond your expectations and then when you achieve it is something that absolutely um, blows you away so that's my goal 10 hours north downs way 50 bring it on so let's talk about the first thing, which is route knowledge. For me, living uh, relatively close to the North Downs Way, I had a good knowledge understanding of the first half of the race. Now, if you cast your mind back to earlier this year, we had the pandemic. The pandemic meant there was no traveling outside of your locality. Because of that, I wasn't really able to explore much beyond um, that halfway point because it involved me running. So at the very least, I'd have to run somewhere in the region of 15 miles or so to get to a point beyond my current working knowledge. And therefore, I meant running back as well, which would be kind of a 30 mile run. It wasn't something I was going to be doing uh, frequently and therefore I didn't do it. That in itself uh, caused an issue on the day. I didn't know what was ahead of me. After 30 miles, I was kind of running in no man's land, which you've got that naivety. So you don't know what's coming up and therefore it doesn't scare you. But then you've also got the surprise and the shock of continuous hills and things which really uh, took my surprise on the day. So for me, a working knowledge of the course and more so the latter half is what I'm going to be after. The latter half is more or less, you know, 30, 40 miles away from where I live. And so because of that, I've got to be reasonable and quite, quite realistic with the amount of opportunities I'm going to have to get out there, especially to the final parts of the course. But I think it's going to be important for me to at least have a play around in that location. So even if it means being dropped slightly further afield and running back, whilst the course is in reverse, having an understanding of the elevation even going down gives you a feeling of what it might be like to go up as well. So for me, understanding the route, um, I've got my one time experience of it, the second half of the race, but I need to build in more route knowledge um, or at least replicate some of that elevation towards the end uh, so that when I'm training, I can start to mimic what it will be like, especially on tired legs. So that's one of the first things I'm going to be looking into is route course knowledge and also learning from some fantastic people who I'm now really pleased to know who have done that course and have done it in a much, much, much faster time than I have. The pace. So I did record a video actually, I haven't put it up and it's of me analysing the stats of the race and I can put it up if it's something that people want, but you know, it's me talking through Strava essentially. So the pace, I've used the Jack Daniels calculator. I've never really used it before, but it seemed to be something that's quite popular. And I'm just looking down my notes here. It's showing a pace um, around about 7.30, but also 7.24. There's a little slight discrepancy there. Um, and that changes based on the elevation. If you add the elevation in, it does give you a slight different um, uh, indication of what you should be running at an average pace. So let's just go with that lower one, the 7.24. So running at 7.24 is... Um, is again something that which when you say it out loud you think that's completely reasonable but when you take into account some some big hills you know if you've run anything with hills that that elevation uh, really can take a toll on your legs and therefore affect the average pace uh, the average pace you'll see now on the screen that i did for my my north downs way 50 this year was um you know the best i could do on the day and if you aren't aware 
after around about 18 miles, I think it was, I slipped and I, I just hurt my knee a lot and I wasn't able to, to run, especially the downhills. So I lost a lot of time there. And there's a lot of things that went wrong because of the injury that I sustained. Um, it just completely impacted my average time. And I that's some of the reason, again, why I now want to redo it, because it wasn't a problem on the day in terms of my level of fitness. Um, it was a problem because of the injury. And so I'm not saying that I could have broken 10 hours a day, or certainly not, but I could have definitely knocked what I believe to be around about an hour off just from looking at the stats and seeing the effect it had from 18 miles or so onwards. So looking at the pace indicator there, that's what I'm looking to do. And what I really like about the Jack Daniels is it also shows you what the paces should be for your other training runs. So I'll be looking at those carefully to see if it matches what I feel comfortable with. And obviously, in terms of feel, when I'm doing those training runs, if it does feel correct for my body, I'll continue to explore that as an option. But for me, pacing is going to be key. And um, just thinking back to that root knowledge as well, I know that the first 17K or so is relatively flat and I can run it with a bit more confidence this time around. I was really, really saving my legs on the day and I, I walked anything that was other than flat. But I think for me, I can make some sensible gains early on and just give myself a little bit more of a buffer on the average pace um, and build a little bit more uh, of a cushion by working through that first 17K at a more sensible pace. My training runs there were some of the region of about 20, 25 minutes quicker Obviously, it was only 17, 18K in my training runs, but to give you an idea of how fast it could be run um, with my level of fitness as it was, you know, I, I did definitely slow down a lot early on, but there was 50 miles to go in the day and I wasn't going to blow up too early on. So that's something to bear in mind, the pace. The pace is going to be key. Nutrition is really fascinating because basically the nutrition that I wanted to go with was spring energy. And because of the pandemic, there was no spring energy at all in this country. I was promised and promised and promised by the supplier so many times it was coming in. In the end, with about I don't know two months ago, I transitioned over to Unived. Now, Unived is a vegan product, a product which I had tried before and I didn't really like it at all. This was probably about two years ago. But I decided that I needed to do something. There was plentiful stock of it and I thought there's a lot of runners who I really admire who are using Unived and Harry Runs in particular, for example, who's an ultra runner. I'm sure you know about him anyway, Harry Jones. Uh, he uses it to great success. So I got some stock of Unived, started trying it out and on the day it really did serve me very, very well. I could not complain whatsoever about it. So I'll be using Unived again. I'm very, very happy with it. Spring Energy now does exist in this country but I just feel like, you know what? Spring Energy, you're great. I wouldn't mind you know, occasionally having one or two of your gels uh, because they are lovely. But I think for me, a consistent plan, stick with Unived. Don't mess around with something that worked before. So Unived is going to be on the day. And I also use Tailwind. I had a big issue and a concern, and it was something that was raised beforehand, that people had said the Tailwind offered on the day is watered down. And having tried on the day, I absolutely agree. It does not taste in any way close to how it would be if you put a sachet into a flask, which I completely understand. However, if you want to be serious about an event and you decided for whatever reason not to take um, your own stock of uh, Tailwind, then I think you're going to come unstuck. And there's no way at all I would now uh, rely on what they provide. It's fine, but it just tastes very, very watered down. It certainly doesn't have the same benefits. So for me, it's going to be Tailwind as well. A couple of sachets just to keep me ticking over. Again, a product I'm very, very comfortable with. I've been using that for about four years now. Four years? I don't know. Ever since I started running, I've been using Tailwind and I, I truly love the product. Really, really easy to take down and no stomach issues whatsoever. Shoes. Shoes is a big deciding factor, isn't it? I ran with the Hoka Challenger ATR 6s in the end. I trained with the ATR 5s, my favourite shoe. Unfortunately for me, the ATR 5s were retired by Hoka. Uh, I couldn't get them anywhere. I tried my very best. The sizing that I need is a 10.5 wide. It became more or less impossible to get. I had been in contact with Hoka who said the ATR6s are by default a wider shoe. So I got the ATR6s, I actually bought a standard pair and then I bought a Gore-Tex pair off of eBay. Somebody had bought them and couldn't return them outside the 30 days. So in the end, uh, looking at the conditions leading up to the race, I actually went with the Gore-Tex, so my eBay purchase. And those shoes cost about £45. And they are, again, standard size, not a wide fit. And the only issue I had was that I lost my big toe on my left foot and that was down to the width I think it was quite a warm day I'm sure my feet expanded my left foot is just slightly marginally um, bigger than my right foot and that therefore meant I did unfortunately lose that big toe it's the first toenail I've ever actually lost sorry not big toe just a toenail first toenail I've actually ever lost 
So for 2022, I still do have the ATR6s, but I also have the Hoka Speedgoat 4s. Now, Speedgoat 4s, I'm not actually running, uh, but it's certainly a consideration. I've got time, got plenty of time, but what I will be doing quite early on in my training block is making sure I've explored all options and I commit to a shoe. I'm not really somebody who messes around with rotation signs a week to go. Um, when I know the shoe, I'll buy a second pair of them and I'll use those on rotation um, just because I want to get really, really comfortable. And it gives me an inner confidence to know that the shoes are 100% reliable. So the Hokers were fantastic for me this year round. A really, really comfortable shoe, no issues there. But yeah, I think just a slight pinch and a slightly too tight, especially on the left foot. So I'll be giving that a lot of thought. Um, and of course, if you've got any ideas about what would work, then please do let me know. But as we know, everyone's so specific with their shoe type. I'd have to think carefully about whether I dived in for a new brand. It's unlikely that I'll do that. I'll probably just be sticking with Hoka. But I'm always open to the idea if people say, actually, there's a really comfortable shoe. I like a cushioned shoe. I'm not going out there to try and destroy a world record. So for me, I'm going to be out there for a long time, let's say 10 hours. Um, so I want a shoe that really is quite comfortable. Let's talk kit. For the most part, my kit is going to remain exactly the same. I'm comfortable with the shorts. I've got a naked band. I've got my compressed sport calf sleeves, which actually I bought a new pair of in the Black Friday sale. I used a Gymshark shirt that was about £11 and it was absolutely phenomenal. I loved it. Um, the chances are though, I'll probably be running in my um, kind of club t-shirt, which is the Guildford Trail Runners. I'll probably be running in that just to represent. And uh, in terms of the vest, I used a Camelback Ultra Pro vest, which I did a review on. However, more recently, I've recently acquired a, an Ultra Ultimate Direction Hard Rocker vest. So I'll be trialing that to see but I had been in the market for a new vest because I felt that from, it didn't quite fit as perfectly as I wanted to. It was phenomenal all the day, no rubbing, no issues. But throughout the day, I was just aware the bottles didn't sit quite straight. And I think just a slightly bigger, even in terms of size or in terms of capacity, would just allow things to be a little bit more spread out and rather than being too enclosed on me because it did feel like I was kind of running quite tightly packed in so that's something to consider but probably the kit will remain exactly the same I use dry max socks I love those I've got arm sleeves if I need that I've got a new rab uh, hat which is quite cool a new little beanie and maybe I'll wear a cap but that's probably going to be the Solomon XA cap not too much going to change with the kit because I just love it. I use it day in, day out. I've got quite a few more Gymshark t-shirts as well. So I'll be dipping into the different pieces of clothing. But of course, the training block is going to be going throughout the winter period, January through to May. And so because of that, most of the things I wear for training, I wouldn't be wearing on the day anyway, unless the weather continues to be relatively poor or cold. So I hope that gives you a little bit of an insight. Um, I tried to kind of rattle through everything there. But the big goal is me trying to break 10 hours for this uh, 50 miler. I'm really, really excited. I'd love to have you on the journey with me. Um, already, I've started to have communication with a few of the runners who are not only doing the race, but are willing to, to kind of meet up and do some training runs together. So I'm really, really excited. I think a collaborative community effort is, is what's needed in these occasions. And uh, finally, if you haven't seen the video, I would love you to go and see the video for this year because it really means a lot to me. Any questions, let me know down below. But uh yeah, if not, I'm going to see you for training officially in the new year. And uh, yeah, cannot wait to get this thing started.